uh, in contemporary dance, a lot of universities have composition classes, but in ballet, we have our own eyes, our own bodies. Um, I think there's like four different points to make for me. Yes. Uh, one, uh, and, and they're all go back to advice for young dancers who might be interested in choreographing. In the ballet world, we just don't really have uh, a fully evolved training system for choreographers. We don't have really any. Uh, in contemporary dance, a lot of universities have composition classes, but in ballet, we have our own eyes, our own bodies. Um, I learned about structure uh, I went to the University of Texas at Austin, big university with not very much professional dance coming through. Ballet Austin at that time was a small little regional company um, and uh, wasn't even a professional company yet. Uh, and um, maybe once a year, American Ballet Theater would come through or something like that. And I went to the library and I watched a, D well, actually it was not even DVD, it was the, you know, the old videotapes of George Balanchine's The Four Temperaments probably 30 times. And it was uh, a very old video of Jacques D'Amboise um, explaining, talking about it, or Eddie Villala. Eddie Villala was explaining the theme and variations concept and uh, explaining how the music changed, et cetera, at each section, we watch each section. And then I watched that finale after Choleric and the, the structure of the stage. I watched it about 30 times. That's how that's how what taught how how I learned to maneuver groups. I it was really by watching repertoire. And it was uh and then I learned to make movement by just grabbing my friends, going to the studio, having some music that I thought was cool, and making ballets with no purpose, uh, except just like let's create dances together and find some way to do it. So um, those two things set me up. One was, as an, uh, and I started to go see ballet. I mean, we all go to ballets and we all look at the dancers. We want to see, and the PK turns, is the girl flexing her foot when she PKs or is it really pointed? You know, all the stuff we can dissect technically. I stopped doing that. I mean, I still do that, of course, but I started to really watch ballet as a choreographer like the structure, the choices that the choreographers made. So I looked at dance through that lens, and I still do. I do both, you know, I can multitask, as they say. Um, and then the other one is, I just went to the studio and started to develop a, vo a vocabulary. And with friends that just were in the company, uh, you know, with the American system has this long layoff period, and I was living in New York, and uh, we would take class from David Howard, and then we'd stay in the studio for an hour or two afterwards, and just make up dances. Um, I would advise uh, uh, dancers to do those two things, watch and do those two things, watch and do Alver, after about the, some of the, some of the steps, the qualities that were in the very first ballet I did, uh, you know, 30 years ago are still, still appear in the work today. The vocabulary was personalized to me, but it's classical ballet. It was you know, a contemporary, you've got to be a good classical ballet dancer to, to, um, yeah. to dance my work, honestly. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just interested in the line and the, the technique. That's one, that's, those are two factors, Wrench out. A, a third thing I would mention is um, over time, I started to trust myself more, to trust the dancer more. So I would come in quite prepared initially in my early years. And over time, in part because I didn't have time as an artistic director, your life is crazy. And I didn't have the time to prepare that much. And secondly, particularly at Washington Ballet and now at Hong Kong Ballet, I choreographed in an environment where I was always also the director. And so I knew the dancers very well and I learned to trust them and collaborate with them. So I started to come into the studio less and less prepared with steps because I knew together we could have a special sauce. So I, I that, but that, that, that I can only do after going through a process of many years of a lot of preparations, a lot of the like, developing my own personal, um, personal way. The fourth thing I'll say is that over time, uh, I like to live life. I'd like to think that what we do is metaphorical. 
What we do as dancers is metaphor. We're, we're a metaphor for the audience that is watching us. We're showing them a, 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 a heightened version of themselves. We're like the skinny mirror of them. We can jump higher, we can dance more, we can turn more, we can, you were skinnier, we look great, we're more prettier, um, but we're them. We're the same as the audience. We're showing them how amazing they, they are. You know, we're the, the metaphor for them. And so I want also, uh, I find the work has become more virtuosic over time. There is, there's just more technique in it now than there was even 10 years ago. Uh, you know, I asked Dan, it's just, it's fun to play with the technique we work on every day. So I like to push, I like dancers to push to the limit because that's just why we're doing it. But also it's a metaphor for living life. You know, when uh, Odile, when Fouette turns were invented for Odile in the 19th century, it was as, it wasn't just because it was entertaining to the audience. It is, but it's not there for that purpose. It's there to express how powerful she was, a uh, 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 character she is, and how she didn't need a man to support her. She could just, she was like raw power and glamour. Uh, and, and, and that's why Fetes are there. Likewise, in the ballets now, I've learned to uh, incorporate virtuosity and try to make it uh, part of the character development or something about say make a statement about the piece about the whatever i'm trying to say these days i'm doing only narrative work so it's usually about the character uh, or the storytelling but i but i do like to find ways to challenge dancers technique uh be, because it has this metaphorical quality and it has this secondary uh, benefit of kind of giving dancers something challenging to work on and it's uh, just, it, it, it's, you know, it, it's, it's like going through fire. You're, you're stronger at the end of going through fire if you've gone through the fire. Sure.